my memory kind of fades out about the start of that lap. Kicks back in, you know, waking up in ICU on a ventilator. Uh, at the time, I had absolutely no memory of, of how I got there. Even as a little kid, when I used to watch the IndyCar races, for me, what fascinated me, apart from the racing and the technology and the f speed, was how well these people were organized having their own hospital on site with their own doctors and people they understand about the job. We're all firefighter paramedics on the trucks. We have three trucks, four guys on each truck. The benefit is there's a core group of guys. We work together every weekend. The drivers know who we are. They feel comfortable about looking up and seeing somebody that they know. Basically, the piece of suspension, it went in the tub and entered me right under my kind of right butt cheek. And it came out up and around my, my left hip. They got me into the ambulance and immediately were just trying to pack the wounds and try and stop the bleeding. Bleeding out was really the big worry of that day. My main role is accident investigation. We record as much information as we can about that accident. We wanted to make sure we weren't going to see that same type of failure and put another driver through that. It is a really helpless feeling in, in a sense, you know, I mean, bracing is not a job, it's a life. I don't necessarily enjoy the, the crashes, but that's why we're here, is for that. 99% of the time, it's fun. You get that 1% of the time where it's not so fun. People don't realize how much IndyCar did for safety and racing. Every move we make in IndyCar, it's very well thought, but we're not gonna get it right all the time. All of these people have massive amounts of experience, not only you know in medical and EMT, things like that, but at the racetrack doing this particular job. I mean, they're all very seasoned, very experienced, and there's no doubt that that played a huge part in what got me out of that car in one piece, still breathing.